In my latest upload featuring both the 6600K and the 4690K, the video of which you can check out right here, a few of you claimed that it was somehow unfair of me to downgrade my DDR4 frequency to 2133 MHz to be in line with my DDR3 frequency, also at 2133 MHz. You claimed that an increase in DDR4 frequency would have yielded much better results for the 6600K, and therefore gaming benchmarks and CPU synthetic benchmarks would have been you know, much better. So we would have yielded higher margins in performance on both the gaming and CPU synthetic sides of our test. So in this video, we're going to put that theory to the test. Does an increase in DDR4 frequency actually yield an increase in both gaming and CPU synthetic tests? The test bench for this video will of course consist of the 6600K, an MSI Z170A Gaming Pro motherboard, and two 4GB sticks of a Vixer Blitz DDR4 factory clocked to 2800 MHz. The only variable that will change during the course of this video will be the frequency at which our DDR4 operates. So originally we ran all of our tests at 2800 MHz, and then I went into the BIOS and manually downclocked the RAM frequency to 2133 MHz. The process isn't very difficult at all, depending on your motherboard, click a button that'll send you into your BIOS, go into the overclock tweaker, it's what it's usually called, and then manually set your DDR4 frequency to whatever its stock frequency is. Don't try to over clock it because you're going to get into some trouble. You're going to have to really tweak with your voltages and your latencies to get an overclock with RAM. I don't recommend doing that, but you can very easily underclock RAM, which is what I did in this particular clip right here. So with that out of the way, we ran four separate tests, two of them being CPU synthetic and two of them being games. Let's go ahead and see what the results were. Okay, so first up, in the case of Cinebench, there really isn't much of a difference at all to be seen. However, Cinebench mostly depends on the number of cores you have, and the number of threads you have, and the frequency at which your CPU operates, not necessarily the frequency at which your RAM operates, so I can't really say that there's any surprise here. However, in the case of Geekbench 3, there was a noticeable difference between both the multi-core and single-core scores. Our 2800MHz platform received about 500 extra points on the multi-core side of things and about 200 extra points in the single core side of things. So you could argue that in tasks where RAM is more heavily involved, obviously, you will start to see those added benefits. The first of our two games was Dirt Rally, and I would generally regard Dirt Rally as more of a GPU intensive game than anything else, and that definitely shows in these graphs. You really can't discern much of a difference at all between our higher clocked RAM platform and our lower clocked RAM. In fact, really only about a 1 FPS difference on the averages would be completely unnoticeable during gameplay, so a lot of the GPU intensive games really won't benefit from this faster RAM. However, things change in the case of GTA 5, pretty much as always. Ha! Just kidding. Really, things don't change at all for GTA 5, even though GTA 5 is much more CPU intensive. In fact, we really only see, once again, about a 1 FPS increase on the average side of things, and about a 2 to 3 FPS increase on the maxes and mins. So just because GT5 is a very CPU intensive game, this does not mean that an increase in DDR4 frequency is going to yield noticeable frame per second increases. They're just not directly correlated. There are many, many other factors that play a role here. 
In fact, most of these variables are almost solely dependent on your graphics card, so whatever your VRAM frequency is and whatever your GPU frequencies are can dramatically affect the frame rates that you see in most of your games. So let's clear things up for a second. When I decide to run identical frequencies for both my DDR3 and DDR4 platforms, I'm really not changing much at all. In fact, in the case of my FX6300 vs i3-6100 video, of which you can check out right here, I received a ton of backlash from people who said that, whoa, 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 you use different frequencies for DDR3 and DDR4. That is not fair at all. There really isn't going to be much of a difference if I decided to run DDR3 at 2133 megahertz. These tests alone prove that. So that's the myth I want to get off of this channel. DDR4 and DDR3 frequencies don't make much of a difference at all, especially when you decide to game or even when you're just doing simple tasks on your computer. I personally buy faster RAM only because I video edit all the time and that is a place in which you will notice the difference between DDR3 and DDR4 and the differences in frequencies. But other than that, if all you do is game or just surf the web, YouTube, whatever, all of those tasks will not benefit from faster RAM at least in any noticeable way unless you decide to nitpick and say, oh, well, one FPS is an increase that's justifiable for me. Maybe it is for you, I'm not really gonna argue that, but the results are here for you all to see, and I would like to hear what you have to say about these results in the comments below. Keep in mind that I did not change any cast latencies, and we used a GTX 960 in all these tests. I know I should have said that up front, but that is, uh, that's the state of these benchmarks here. So, let me know in the comments below what you think, be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it for whatever reason. If you really liked it, however, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We post videos like this all the time. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.